What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of Axe Creation. And in this week's lesson, we're gonna check out a simple chord progression and look at how ways we can essentially become creative with it, right? Kind of strip down a basic chord progression and explore things musically, all right? So we're gonna go over a really simple progression. It's B minor, D, and G. So let me play you the example really fast, and then you guys can stick around and we'll kind of deep dive into what's going on and kind of, you know, where I pulled this out of, right? Because that's kind of the fun on what we do here. So let's check out the example. So there you guys go, right? A really fun um, musical idea. It develops into something, right? So let's kind of pull back what we're gonna do here, all right? So before we jump in, we are in standard tuning, right? Nothing crazy going on here. And down in the description below, you can find the links for the tabs for this example. So this progression is essentially a B minor, a D, and a G chord. And you might hear somebody play those chords like this. Right, you've probably heard that before. Now, I'm not going to go out there and say oh, I hate playing stuff like that because that's not true, right? But when I choose to express myself musically, that's not going to be what I choose to play. I'm not a singer-songwriter. I'm not going to put down lyrics and melody over that. I will put down melody, but not necessarily lyrics, right? So I'm going to strip down those chords as much as possible and really try to emote, right? Really pull out some of the natural tensions that are found in there, right? So let's check that out. We start off, like I said, it's B minor to D. So we have, I strip it down to just the power chord. <laughs> There's the D chord. Now, I can play this with five and four, as I would a, an actual D major chord, right? But let's listen to that really fast. Right? It doesn't sound bad in any way, and it works. But there's some things that are going on there why I choose not to. And the main thing is, if I take that F sharp with that fourth fret and I actually play the D, the second with it, and I get this, that's actually just a whole step, those two notes. But your ear is still gonna hear the D, right? So you get to throw in that tension and also remove that real uplifting major quality that that F sharp or the third is gonna give you. Right, and you can kind of exploit that cross string tension there. And then we're gonna to move to the G chord. And if you guys are familiar with my videos on this channel, I have talked about my love for the major seventh chord, or more specifically, even just the interval. And that's what's going on here, all right? And to tie that in, there's another reason why I left that third out, to kind of bring in that tension, because it adds movement to the upper notes. And I'm, and that's really kind of where I am because there is melody to be found there. So now when we jump over to that G chord, right away, there's that major seventh interval. Uh, interval. And if you're not familiar with what a major seventh interval is, if I play those notes three on the low string, skip a string four, that's this high note is one half step or one fret away from the octave. 
That is a major seventh interval. Super tension. Tension. Super tension. Super tension, right? A lot of emotion, dissonance. There's stuff to be really dug out in that interval. It's really fun. Explore. Right now, essentially, we're getting a little turnaround melody here. All over the G chord. That's going to lead us back to the B. There we have a slight melodic variation on the repeat, which leads us to something new developing. Now, when I was writing this, I didn't put the chords together first on the second half of this, right? I actually came up with the melody first. So you have this. Very simple arcing melody, right? That has a repeating phrase and it turns around on itself, and then on the repeat, you have a nice descending line back to where we started. So I put the chords in after the fact, right? So just to make it a little more powerful, power chord, and then jumping up and grabbing that B. Now I'm I'm going to grab that C sharp, 6th fret on the G string, but here I'm going to bring in that major 7th again. And if you notice the note I'm playing underneath it, 5th fret of our A string, that's D. So that D is still there. Here I'm grabbing A, 5th fret low string, and then essentially like a little 6th interval, jumping up to the F sharp here, carrying over the F sharp through all the other chords. Now you can play that open A with that note, and I do on the repeat, but I like holding those chords. Same thing, G and E, and jumping up to the A on the B string. Right? So you have. And then here's the open A. Same chord. And then here's the melody that kind of leaves us hanging. Right? Kind of leads us back to that note. And then on the, the end of it, it's just the descending scalar idea. And there you guys go, right? Being creative with very simplic, simplic. Being creative with very simplistic chord progressions, right? You can see there's tons of lessons on chord progressions, right? One, four, five, one, two, five, one, four, five, six, one, six, five, four, all of that stuff. And a lot of it means nothing to us metal players and rock players because we don't apply those concepts in this manner. So, but there's still something to be learned from it, right? Take those chord progressions, strip them down, explore them, and create some really nice harmonies and tension that you find naturally in those chords. So, there you go guys. I hope you like what's going on in this lesson. It's a lot of fun doing the original lessons like this. As I said, down in the description below, you can find a link for the tabs and other ways to support the channel. And as always, let me know what you come up with. So until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.